This is the VOA Special English Education Report. This week on our program, we answer a question from Japan. A listener named Maki would like to know if the test known as the TOEIC is popular in the United States. TOEIC is the test of English for international communication. It measures the ability of people to communicate in the workplace using everyday English. The Educational Testing Service in Princeton, New Jersey, develops and administers the TOEIC. It says more than 9,000 organizations use the test in more than 90 countries. Each year the TOEIC is taken in the United States about 20,000 times. So how popular does that make it? Well, consider that last year the test was given more than 5 million times worldwide. Non-native English speakers take the test to demonstrate their English skills when seeking a new job or a promotion. Some organizations use the TOEIC to measure progress in English training programs and as a placement test. The cost of the test is set locally in each country. The TOEIC is really two tests. People can take one or both of them. One is a paper and pencil test. It measures listening and reading skills. The other test is given on a computer. It measures speaking and writing skills. Eleven questions on the computer test require speaking. For example, the test taker is asked to read out loud or describe a picture. Eight other questions require written answers, including an opinion essay. We visited the ETS website for more information about the TOEIC, but one of the first things we saw was a warning about a phishing scam. A phishing scam is a kind of crime that uses email to trick people into providing financial or other personal information. In this case, the emails claim to be from the Educational Testing Service. Spokeswoman Christine Bettinelli advises people taking the TOEIC to be suspicious of any emails claiming to be from ETS. They should be especially suspicious of messages that ask for information that they have already provided for the test. The spokeswoman says if you get an email you are not sure about, forward it or send a separate message to contact ETS at ETS.org. And that's the VOA Special English Education Report. You can learn more about English language tests from our foreign student series at voaspecialenglish.com. You can also find transcripts, podcasts, and captioned videos of our reports and post comments. And this is the VOA Special English Education Report. A class with tens or even hundreds of thousands of students might sound like a teacher's bad dream. But a big idea in higher education these days is the massive open online course, or MOOC. Some universities offer free non-credit MOOCs available to anyone in the world. Others charge for courses and provide credits. The idea is still developing. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology recently started its first MOOC. The school plans to offer many free non-credit courses through a project called MITx. So far, most massive open online courses are in computer science, 
technology, mechanics, and engineering. For example, students around the world are taking a free course called Building a Computer Search Engine. Two computer scientists, Sebastian Trun and David Evans, are offering this course through Udacity.com. Mr. Evans is on leave from the University of Virginia. Mr. Trun is a Stanford research professor and a Google Fellow best known for his work on a driverless car. For six weeks, the students watch short videos and then take informal quizzes. Mr. Evans says the quizzes are part of the lecture to keep students engaged and keep them thinking. The quizzes are not graded and students can try them as often as they want whenever they want. They can also watch the videos repeatedly. Students receive homework and join online groups to exchange questions and answers about the course. The teachers hold virtual office hours to answer questions that the students have voted to send them. They also present their own questions and observations. The students take a final examination to show where they rate in the class. Everyone who finishes the course receives a grade and proof of completion. Top students get letters documenting their work. Mr. Tron started Udacity, which supports free MOOCs. Udacity hopes to make a profit in the future by connecting possible employers with interested students. On his Stanford homepage, he says he wants to democratize education. Education, he says, should be free, accessible for all, everywhere, and anytime. David Evans says online courses can deliver high-quality education to many more students at much lower cost, but he recognizes the limits. His hope, he says, is that the best traditional universities will be able to focus on the things they can do really well that can't be done better through an online university. For VOA Special English, I'm Alex Villarreal. I'm Alex Villarreal with the VOA Special English Education Report. Some students get so nervous before a test they do poorly even if they know the material. Sion Bylock is a psychology professor at the University of Chicago in Illinois. She has studied these highly anxious test takers. She says students might even start worrying about whether this exam is going to prevent them from getting into the college they want. She says when students worry, they use up attention and memory resources that could be used on the test. Professor Bylock and another researcher, Gerardo Ramirez, have developed a possible solution. Just before an exam, highly anxious test takers spend 10 minutes writing about their worries about the test. She said when students write about their worries on paper, they think about the worst that could happen. They might realize it is not as bad as they thought it was. And writing about it prevents these thoughts from popping up when they are taking the test. The researchers tested the idea on a group of 20 anxious college students. They gave them two short math tests. After the first one, they asked the students to either sit quietly or write about their feelings about the upcoming second test. The researchers added to the pressure. They told the students that those who did well on the second test would get money. 
They also told them that their performance would affect other students as part of a team effort. Professor Bylock says those who sat quietly scored an average of 12 percent worse on the second test. But the students who had written about their fears improved their performance by an average of 5 percent. Next, the researchers used younger students in a biology class. They told them before final exams either to write about their feelings or to think about things unrelated to the test. Professor Bylock says highly anxious students who did the writing got an average grade of B plus compared to a B minus for those who did not. But what if students do not have a chance to write about their fears immediately before an exam or presentation? Professor Bylock says students can try it themselves at home or in the library and still improve their performance. The researchers wrote about their findings in the journal Science. For VOA Special English, I'm Alex Villarreal. Tell us how you deal with anxiety before a big event. Share your comments at voaspecialenglish.com or on Facebook and Twitter at VOA Learning English. I'm Alex Villarreal with the VOA Special English Education Report. Songs teach language. Consider a song like Tom's Diner by Suzanne Vega. An American teaching English overseas once told us that students love that song. Recently, we asked people on the Special English Facebook page to suggest other songs that English learners might like. Noemi Nito wrote, I'm one of those English students who love Tom's Diner. I started learning English with Lemon Tree by Fool's Garden. Another favorite is Truly Madly Deeply by Savage Garden. Another person, Asi Tambunan, suggested the song God Only Knows by Orianti. Yongi Yako wrote that ABBA's songs from Sweden are perfect for class work. Other good songs for learning English are songs by The Beatles and John Lennon, as well as Louis Armstrong's Wonderful World. Paul Cifuentes says Bob Marley's songs are amazing for teaching. Another teacher, Joseph Decca, says songs by Johnny Cash have always worked in his classroom. He says his students can hear the words, plus the songs often have stories. He also likes We Will Rock You by Queen and Beautiful Girls by Sean Kingston. He says young children love C is for Cookie by Cookie Monster from the TV show Sesame Street. Nina John Smith suggested these songs, It's My Life and We Weren't Born to Follow by Bon Jovi. Also, Nothing Else Matters by Metallica. Aurelio Lorenzo Costa Guzmao says he began to like English after his teacher played the Westlife song, I Have a Dream. He wrote, that was eight years ago. I was in the seventh grade. And from that day on, my dream of improving my English skills became attached in my mind. Teachers can use this song to convey the message to their students that they should have their own dream for the future. Aurelio's story was no surprise to another commenter. 
Katya Kavenko. She especially likes songs by Michael Jackson and Queen. She wrote, When you listen to your favorite songs, you feel emotionally high, and it moves you to action. For VOA Special English, I'm Alex Villarreal. Do you have any favorite songs for learning English? You can share other music suggestions for English learners at our website, voaspecialenglish.com, or on Facebook at VOA Learning English. We are also on Twitter and iTunes. This is the VOA Special English Education Report. Leaders of the world's 20 largest economies met for three days starting June 25th in Toronto, Canada. The group of 20 discussed the best ways to guide the world economy to a stronger recovery. The G20 is 19 countries and the European Union. Before the meeting in Toronto, international charities held the first ever Girls 20 Summit. The goal was to bring the economics power of girls and women and the importance of women's issues to the attention of G20 leaders. Organizers invited 20 young women from each of the G20 member countries. They discussed the United Nations Millennium Development Goals and better ways to meet them. The goals include cutting poverty, improving access to health care, and providing education to all children. 19-year-old Anwar Basunbui from Saudi Arabia said many Saudi women are interested in working, but they need permission from their husband or other male guardian. And there are restrictions on the professions they can join. She says her culture still believes that men are biologically more qualified to lead or rule women. She says the Saudi leadership has not failed women. Saudi women have not yet asked for what they want. Irem Tumer was the 19-year-old representative from Turkey. She says Turkey has approved many legal reforms as part of its efforts to join the European Union. But these have not necessarily been put into action. She worries about violence against women. She says the safety of girls still remains a big problem. Laws have been passed and many police officers and other officials are being trained about this. But more widespread awareness and education for all girls is necessary to solve this problem. Irem Tumer said she would carry home two messages from the Girls 20 Summit. The first is the need for education. The other is the need to empower women and let them take part in business and political decision making. The United Nations estimates that females age 10 to 24 are one-eighth of the world's population. Many of them are the main providers for their families. Yet, in the developing world, many are unable to enjoy even the most basic human rights. And that's the VOA Special English Education Report. You can read, listen, and comment on our reports at voaspecialenglish.com. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and iTunes at VOA Learning English.